For the vineyards in this region, we have what's called vine mealybug, and that has become pest number one. I would recommend Sutara to other growers, and I would say that Sutara has become the backbone of a program in the fight against the vine mealybug. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine reporting to you from Kapka here in Anaheim, right next door to Disneyland right here, right? And I'm here with John Roncaroni, Emeritus uh, Weed Science Advisor in the North Coast. I, I think that's how they managed to get you here was because they, you know, they have Disneyland next door in your retirement here. Oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly why I'm here. But I mean, it's... <laughs> and, and, and to spread some knowledge. Right, which you have some important stuff that you're sharing today. I so I so. yeah. wanted to talk specifically about spraying for weeds in the, in the vineyards. There's a big concern, I think, because they can measure, uh, you know, what's in, what's in your wine, right, in parts per billion. So you can pick up even littlest traces of different things. And when uh, something like Roundup, you know, glyphosate or right. whatever comes into that, uh, consumers get a little nervous yeah. about that. That's yeah. not something what that that they want to they want to find in their wine, right? Exactly. Whether it's toxic or not. Right. Uh, so I wanted to talk with you today. What some best practices? What growers can do, specifically wine grape growers, right. uh, from your you know expertise in the North well, Coast. Thank you very much. What what they can do to minimize right. any potential, because obviously the weeds are going to be a problem. Right. And if they're going to spray herbicide, you know, to take care of that, what can they do to, to mitigate that, exactly. those problems? And that's, that's the thing, Malcolm, is that even if the, the, the chemical we're using isn't toxic at all, right, there's no reason for an herbicide to be in the crop, right? So something like, we'll use the term with glyphosate, is that I think our timing, you know, if we have some different times when we can use it, uh, maybe during the dormant season, and then once we get past and, and after bud break and, the, and the, the grapes are starting to grow, that we use some sort of maybe uh, drift-reducing techniques. One, we can use drift-reducing drift nozzles, or we can use shielded sprayers. And, you know, once we get near after bloom or into verasion, that maybe we don't spray uh, a systemic herbicide anymore. Now, I know there's been in, uh, uh, some concern that maybe when we're spraying during the dormant season that it's going, you know, into the vine and coming, you know, into the vine. And I would tell people that, you know, we would see probably damage, that early damage from glyphosate that many growers have seen from spraying in the fall when you see that. And we don't see that if it's done properly in, in the dormant season. So, uh, you know, today in my presentation, I talk about um, how we can use just spending a little bit more on our, our, our uh, herbicide application, maybe nozzles, maybe the equipment we use. You know, it, it's not uh, rare for growers, wine grape growers, to spend quite a bit more money on their fungicide and insecticide sprayers because in the past they never really worried about how they were applying their herbicides. Well, now it's become very, very important on how we apply those herbicides. And, and again, as I, I like to stress, I mean, and I do talk about if you don't want to use herbicides, you know, there's lots of people now using sheep and some brand new cultivation equipment, you know, and uh, electronic, you know, using electrocuting weeds. So there's a lot of techniques you can use. But if it comes down that you are using herbicides, there are some fairly simple techniques that we can use to really keep the herbicides where you spray them. Now, as far as how how this the herbicide is, is, is getting into you know the resulting product the grape um, how how would you say it's getting in so for me it's it's during the growing season and you know sometimes systemic herbicides you know they'll move from source to sink so depending on where you're you know where you're spraying is it getting into that that crop uh, some contact herbicides you know it's just the fact that they're drifting maybe onto the grapes later in the season so you know maybe restrict your time of when maybe start spraying in the fall after harvest you know and then during the dormant season but just making sure you know and I like to tell people we use water sensitive paper to see how our fungicides are being sprayed well when you're spraying your herbicide put one of those uh, water sensitive papers up in the vine to see if you're actually getting any herbicide up there you know just to make sure that you want to spray it on the ground at the weeds and keep it there and really I'm not saying we may not get any but we can really do a much better job, I feel, as an industry to keep it where we spray it. Right, so with those, with those different things and modifications you can make to get it where it needs to right. go, not only are you going to you minimize the risk of getting it onto the, the crop, right. 
but you're also going to save money probably, right? <laughs> you know, I think you can save money. You probably save you probably save some money in herbicides and you know a uh, and I know this is a big expense to some wine growers, but you know a uh, uh, a Venturi nozzle with large droplets may cost you $14. So, you know, I think it's worth uh, maybe worth the investment and get rid of some of those old uh, off-center brass nozzles that you might have that haven't been maybe calibrated in a while. Uh, there's just some really, I think, simple things that we can do. Great. Well, thank you so much, John. I know you're, you're still doing some work, but uh, in yeah. retirement, um, appreciate the, the vast knowledge that you've acquired over you know your career. Yes. And so thank you for spending the time with us. Oh, you bet. Read more about these things in American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.